The Riley and Kimmy Show recording this at Mount Dora Lake Collecticon. Big event. George Perez is here. And where are you? Well, yeah, yeah. You know, George, where is everybody? Well, it's still early. We haven't opened yet. See, that's the key. We're recording this ahead of time <laughs> because George was graceful and said, you know, yeah, we, we can talk on the Riley and Kimmy Show a little bit. And George, thank you for coming on the show, first of all. Oh, no problem. Hey. <laughs> We see each other a lot, don't we? Yeah, I know we do. Yeah, yeah we do. Every floor of function. Cool. Yeah, pretty much. And speaking of that, first of all, this will be uploaded. People will see you are here today till 4 o'clock. That is Lake Collecticon mm -hmm. that's happening. And then a little bit later on, you're going to be at some other places in Florida, one of them being in uh, Jacksonville coming up in November. I know you're going to be at the Hall of Heroes with Peter David. Yes, yes. I would my, my future imperfect and Saxon violence uh, collaborator and, and a good guy. Um, so it's always nice being able to share a show with somebody you like, you know. Well, I've seen written that he says you are his favorite illustrator. Uh, that's what I've seen. Oh, gosh. I guess the money I paid him really uh, bore, bore dividends. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, in November, also you're going to be at Claremont Con and towards the end of November, really uh, close to Thanksgiving. And then you're going to be doing a uh, store anniversary party, uh, if I remember right. right. At uh, my local shop, Smash Comics, over in Mount... Uh, Sanford. In Sanford. I, I, no, I'm in Mount Dora right now. Yeah, but that, down in the historic district. Yes. Yeah. I mean, across the street from Willow Tree, uh, Hollaback to Willow Tree German restaurant. This will be like their uh, their first uh, time you're there, really, their first signing, really? Yes, they, they, they had just moved there a, a, a few months ago, sometimes within this year. So this is their first um, anniversary party in the new location. So actually, I believe they're doing it as a more of a Toys for Tots um, yeah. fundraiser since I'm technically you know, it's not really an anniversary because they were in Smash Comics all the time and obviously this is the first year in the new location. Um, but again, uh, David always runs a great, a great show. You know, it's obviously for a great cause. A lot of cosplayers show up. I'm sure you guys are going to be there covering it. You better be anyway. Um, <laughs> David, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. And of course, I've known David Corporan, the, the manager for pretty much since I moved into Sanford. Uh, and he always you know, runs a very, very friendly shop. And this particular new store, new location is much more like a neighborhood store, which is really, really kind of cool. What it, what it uh, lacks in the size of the one that he had in the Seminole Town Mall makes up for a nice, both an intimacy and a, a great feeling that the whole neighborhood really, really wanted that shop there. Nice. Nice. We'll have to check that out. It'll be our first time visiting that location. David is so important to George, he's actually in your comic books, your Superman comic books. Oh, yes, he was the commissioner of Metropolis. Uh, I also used him as a um, gladiator trainer in um, Sirens. Yes. Uh, great, you know, he has a great face. And, and at least I used his name in Superman and his likeness in Sirens because, uh, because he wasn't uh, the person who drew the book, uh, Jesus Marino, never met David. So, so David was really, really burly. Wow. <laughs> And I've actually, if you check our website and also our Facebook page, we have video of you giving him a sketch as the commissioner of um, Metropolis back yes, a few years ago, right, Megacon. Right, uh, chumming around with Superman, his, yes. his BFF in the, uh, in the comic. Now, speaking of sirens, it's coming to a conclusion, right? It's oh, coming gosh. out, it's coming to an end? I look forward to being able to refer to that book in the past tense. Uh, I am right now uh, doing the cleanup on pages 28 and 29, and I have... And next week I'll be working on the last page of Sirens, uh, issue six. Of course, the book is over a year and a half late. Um, but I, I, again, most people understand because of my uh, well-documented issues yes. regarding my eyesight. Um, and when already they are uh, wooing me with uh, other projects. And, really? Um, there's one project we're going to be discussing, but of course I'm not free to discuss it because we, there's nothing finalized. But like, uh, I probably will be going back to penciling uh, rather than writing penciling and inking because uh, the eyes can only do so much now. And, I, I'm, and if I'm only producing a page a week, if I'm inking, it's like, that's not really conducive to producing a, a timely comic. Um, so I'll, I'll go back to where I started, back to penciling. Thankfully, um, I'm in a financial situation where I... It, I don't have to work if I don't want to, so it'd be kind of nice just to draw for the sheer love of it, but without the pressure of trying to you know, do too much uh, beyond my limitations. I'm, I'm curious, when back when you were with Marvel and DC, let's say in the late 70s, early 80s, what was your page rate back then? How many, oh, what were you doing per At day? At the beginning, when I first started, the pages were, it was $30 a page for pencils. 
Um, I don't know what the inking rate was because I didn't ink at, the, at that point. Uh, but inking is always you know, less than the, the penciling rate. So yeah, so you, you, you made up uh, for lack of um, you know, major income by sheer volume. In those days, I was doing three to three and a half books a month. So of course, that, that, that uh, brought up the revenue. I remember they used to have in the, the checks that were given up by uh, um, the companies, they said, not good for over $1,500. So now these checks were divided, and I said, "Gosh, I, I'm looking for the, uh, the, I'm looking for the forward to the day where I would, they would have to send me two checks because I'd gone beyond fifteen hundred dollars any given week, and now, um, you know, I, what, I, I charge more for a sketch than I than I than I earned for a, a full page of pencils." Um, uh, in those days, and it's still con it's considered a bargain now. But the last time I had a, a, an actual page rate uh, over at Marvel and DC, it exceeded you know uh, more than ten times that amount. And before I let you go, I'm, I've tried to find this answer. Do you have any idea, counting the independent comic books, how many comic books your work you have done something with, either writing, inking, oh, I, I, uh, penciling? I used to keep a list, but after a while, it was it was, it was just too uh, too burdensome to try to keep up with. Particularly since I also try to help a lot many independent uh, publishers by doing providing covers, sometimes providing inks or other uh, things uh, for them. So of course that you know that added to my um, uh, to my index, and it's a, so it's, it's it's rather large. I mean. Anytime people think, you know, oh my God, you were so incredibly prolific, I say, yeah, but look at John Byrne, who was working the same time I was. John probably did three times as much work as I did, because when I was doing one book a month, he was doing three. Uh, uh, I mean, John was, was incredibly fast. Uh, and he inked his own work many times. He wrote his own work. So, uh, so uh, I'm a shadow when it comes uh, to, that, uh, to productivity, when it comes to uh, someone like John. And even people like, you know, Dan Jurgens, who's also been very prolific. And one last one, do the Columbo thing, the last question here, is... One more. Y yeah, yeah, one more thing. Um, Deathstroke. You are the father, the co-father of mm -hmm. Deathstroke. Batman movie being announced with uh, Ben Affleck directing, and supposedly that is the villain, will be Deathstroke. Any, any thoughts, any feelings like maybe somebody George would like to see play this uh, character? Uh, I mean, it's got to be overwhelming, or not overwhelming, but flattering that this is the guy. Well, it's flattering. I mean, I mean... The it's kind of blunt by the fact that Deathstroke's been used in so many other places. I mean, I think I earned more revenue on Deathstroke because it was used in video games than, even, than any of the, wow. the cinematic uh, interpretations. Uh, and quite frankly, I mean, I don't watch any of the movies. Uh, uh, so I've never seen Arrow, so I never saw Deathstroke there, even though I've spoken to, I've spoken to Manu Bennett because he wanted input on the character. You know, I said, well, the character's not really probably the same that, uh, as I drew. Um, and when I heard about it, I remember Marv Wolfman, I think, uh, summed it up succinctly when he said when he saw Deathstroke on a T-shirt, the, the image of the mask, which I never knew would ever become iconic, um, the one-eyed mask. And he said, when he looked at it, only one word came into his mind, ka-ching. Oh, oh, <laughs> because, uh, of course, um, any character uh, that was created from the Titans, even though I never watch a movie, I mean, the, the paychecks, I the royalty checks I receive uh, for those characters have been overwhelming. I mean, the fact that I have not been in, I've been in a situation where I told Stanley, I'm at, at, at one point, I'm living a freelancer's dream uh, that I'm earning more in royalties in these past few years than I ever earned drawing comics. So, that, I mean, it's a great feeling. And the fact that I can now draw comics to the sheer love of it, there's no pressure, you know, because, thanks to all this, I'm, my wife and I are debt free. Um, uh, we have uh, money in the bank and, and, of course, a revenue that uh, keeps on coming. So, I can sit down and the idea of whatever my next project is, of not worrying about how much they pay me. Um, usually they pay me, I ask them, just pay me enough to cover my insurance. Uh, and I can just enjoy myself. And that's a great, great feeling at, at, at my age, uh, not being constantly oppressed by you know, the, 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 the pressure of, oh my God, every single page I do will have to pay a bill. Most of the pages I'm drawing now, the bills have been paid, so they're, they're just, you know, I, I sometimes forget to notate the direct deposit I get on, on those uh, uh, for the work that I do uh, in comics, because it's, in the long run, that's the least amount, amount of income I receive is for actually drawing comics. <laughs> Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it's going to continue with Batman, that movie coming out, and, and you know, 
we'll see Deathstroke alive on the big screen. Yes, I mean, with uh, Deathstroke and all the video games where they use obviously the Titans, whether you know with Raven and Starfire and Nightwing and uh, Cyborg, uh, of course, but, and Cyborg being a member of Justice League, he's another character that, of course, that uh, has become a big revenue earner since DC has very kindly. Uh, made great efforts to make uh, Cyborg the preeminent African-American superhero at DC Comics. So it's like a, uh, and I think a lot of that's thanks to Jeff Johns, uh, who's a, always been a Titans fan. And it's always nice to have people who are fans of yours being in positions of power. <laughs> Well, George, I'm going to let you get ready for the con. It's about to start here. I'm going to tell you something I told the Marvel Wolfman. You both, the two of you, uh, helped a kid, me, when I was a kid, in some very dark times and got me through that because I had a kind of a rough childhood, but you guys inspired me to write and also to try to draw and also to dream. And you both I, thank did. You so thank much. you very much. We're glad we were there for you and, and glad that I mean, after so many years in the industry that to hear that people, you know, not only enjoyed the comics, were inspired by the comics, and I got, it's always gratifying to hear. Thank you. Thank you, George.